<laughs> According to Ecological Letters Journal, we need to revise current views about how plants control water loss through stomachal closure under drought conditions. Why is that? So we have been working on this question since a long time. And uh, first of all, the stomata have two key functions. Uh, first, these l l tiny pores on the leaf, uh, they control gas exchange, uh, the water loss through leaf transpiration, but also the CO2 uh, uptake uh, through photosynthesis. And under drought conditions, the stomata close in response to water deficit uh, to uh, limit the drop in water potential to avoid embolism resistance in the xylem, but also they limit uh, the CO2 uptake by photosynthesis. So there is a trade-off between uh, reducing the loss of water and uh, optimizing uh, the uptake of CO2 by photosynthesis. And it has long been thought that um, uh, drought-resistant plants can maintain stomata open longer under drought condition, much more than the vulnerable species, for instance. Mm -hmm. So this would make uh, those species uh, able to assimilate more carbon under drought condition. So this widespread uh, point of view was rooted uh, on the tight coordination between stomatal closure and embolism resistance. And if you look on this plot, actually, uh, where well, you can see that the stomatal uh, conductance decreases with increasing water stress, you can see that when the species reach like the full uh, stomatal closure, you can see the onset of embolism resistance. So there is a tight coordination between stomatal closure and full stomatal closure and the onset of embolism resistance with a very narrow safety margin in that case. Uh, your study showed that this point of view is actually wrong because all plants must close stomata early. Could you explain that? Yeah, indeed. Our recent meta-analysis um, challenged this point of view. We collect data of embolism resistance and stomata closure for species from different biomes on Earth. And we show that embolism resistance span a much larger range than stomata closure. For instance, Calitris, which is one of the most drought resistant species living in outback in Australia, um, has an embolism resistance of minus 19 megapascal, but it closes stomata by minus 4, just like a temperate oak. This means that the hydraulic safety margins continuously increase with drought resistance and that the expected correlation, uh, correlation between these two traits actually does not exist. Dr. Cochard, so earlier uh, Dr. Delzon said that you've been working on this question for over 20 years. How did that work out? Are you starting to understand a little bit what's going on? Yeah, so yes, yeah, you're right. We have been working on this uh, plant hydraulics for more than 20 years and we have been accumulating a lot of data. And thanks to the new idea that these young guys have uh, brought to the, to the team, we now are starting to understand better this data set. Why is it that embolism resistant species cannot maintain their stomata open longer under drought conditions? So to, under, to understand this, uh, to answer this key question, we have to build a new mechanistic model for, to predict plant mortality. And then we were quite surprised to find that uh, under the common view that the uh, plant should close the stomata at the onset of cavitation, uh, the plant that were the most resistant to cavitation were actually the first to die, which was a surprise and quite uh, something we had some time to realize. And then the only way to accurately predict that the fight, the finding that the, m the most resistant plant actually survived longer to drought was to impose an early stomatal closure. And so that's the key point. To survive longer to a drought, you need to be both cavitation resistant, resistant to embolism, and also to close your stomata very early. What are the implications of your work? So our new uh, work showed that we can capture the whole spectrum of drought resistance with only two parameters, two key parameters. And I think that's a great improvement, improvement uh, especially if for modelers, because that will allow us to better model the gas exchange and the carbon bu budget as at the global scale, but also that will enable us to better predict plant mortality under drought conditions in the future. You can find more information in the journal via Ecology Letters.